Kat here with a moment of Artist Way inspiration. Actually, it'll be a little more than a moment because this video is an overview of the classes that I am doing in person and online, but you're here because you can't make it to those or you need a refresher about what the course is about. It is seven weeks to tackle six weeks of doing the Artist Way which has 12 chapters. So we're going to be doing two chapters a week. So let us get started. I have a short video uh, presentation I want to show you to help let you know what I have in mind and where you fit in. Let me just give me a moment because I'm just gonna have to go back a little bit. Taking a walk with the artist's way. We're gonna be walking along. We're not, it's not a marathon and it's not a sprint. I am the facilitator. I am obviously, I am not the, the uh, writer of the book. I am a creative person. And I have this picture here. This is what I was doing my master's. And I got so worn out. And there was this really neat uh, space where cars would turn around. And my friend was watching. No cars were coming. This was how I felt in the efforts I was giving. So we don't want to get quite this worn out, but I just wanted to introduce myself as a participant, not somebody who is telling you what to do or how to do it, but as a facilitator. Julia Cameron has lots of great ideas. Some of them will be for you and some won't. And I'm going to help facilitate that process. Our path we have today, this is our introduction. I'm going to give you a little overview of my understanding of the morning pages, the artist date, walks that she recommends, and tasks. I'm going to ask you to, to pause your video and do a little writing. I have a contract that's in the, um, I've included a link so you can download my version if you like, or you probably either have this book, The Artist Way, or you should get it if you're going to do the class. And she has a copy in there. We want to do some planning. So I've also uh, added a link to a planning page or you can use your own calendar or any way that you make a plan and see it through. It's very challenging these days, I believe. Um, we're quite a few years out of the pandemic, but I think it still is affecting a lot of people's um, brain processes and how we get things done. So we're gonna be really gentle with ourselves. Uh, your assignment this week will be to read chapters one and two. And remember, mark your calendars. Time to do the writing, time to go on the dates, time to go on walks, and time to do the reading and the tasks. We have a lot to do, but it's all in support of our creativity. So um, we're going to talk more about setting these goals soon. Uh, there's welcome. In the two to six weeks, I'm sorry, the, the weeks two to six, we're going to do a welcome, a review of different things. Uh, we'll do some quiet writing because in each chapter, she asks you to do a, a check-in. So that will be your time during this video. And um, I'll share some thoughts on some of the tasks, the options coming up and um, what you things you just might want to think about and maybe help help you decide which ones are for you. And each week, chapters, uh, I'm sorry, each week from um, week two through six, you're just going to be reading the next two chapters. And of course, mark your calendars. In the final class, I'm going to share with you my personal take on my six weeks walk. Now, um, like I said, I'm the facilitator. I'm also a participant. I will be doing, I'll be making my own contract, doing my own morning pages, artists, dates, tasks, and in the final class, I'll share with you um, my take, my in-depth, my check-in review. Uh, and then you're going to be able to pause your video, write your review, your best and your least favorite parts of your walk with the artist's way, and, and make a notation. What do you want to take forward? And then your assignment will be to go forth and enjoy and, of course, mark your calendars. When's the next time you're going to put your creativity into your calendar and take the time to do what your heart is calling you to do? Um, I just want to say really clearly, as a facilitator, my goal for you and our goal, I hope, is to set the stage for a lifelong love of creative 
a creative life. Um, one of my favorite sayings ever is by MC Richard. Richard's all arts are but apprenticeship. The true art is life. If if we're we're um, making beautiful art, but the space around us is full of chaos and anger and resentment, then is that really creative? I don't know. It's a question. I don't have the answers, but in my life, I feel like I'm searching for a way to create a lifelong engagement with the arts, not to master them, but to embody the very things that I am looking to create, which is connection and beauty and um, symmetry and harmony. So yeah, what do we want to embody? Our emotions, I think they radiate and they ripple. Um, so those are our most most minute and undefined and difficult things to create and harness. But um, this is a question for you. What do you want to embody in this course and going forward? And um, it just in your life, how do you want to feel? Julia Cameron said, growth is an erratic forward movement, two steps forward, one step back. Remember that and be very gentle with yourself. I use this quote, especially because I believe that while we are aspiring to do everything that we can that's included in this, this uh, book, we also have to recognize that it's a lot and it's not always going to feel good and we're not going to always feel on top of the world. However, there is such a thing as 1% daily? What would happen if you improve by 1%? What if you can't do every task that you set your mind to create everything that you were going to do? This chart is really interesting. I don't know too much about math, but it's interesting that if it was 1% better every day, that it's actually an exponential increase. You can see by the line. 1% worse every day is also exponential, but it's much smaller. And I would have to talk to a mathematician of why the increase is so much greater than when you're decreasing. So very, very cool and very interesting. So like Julia Cameron said, be gentle with yourself. And remember, every tiny improvement you make changes your trajectory. And so every tiny improvement reaps so many more rewards. And I think we, we usually give ourselves credit for it. So my idea with the contract is everything's workable. Aim high. Why not? You know, you want to just say do all the tasks and do everything and do 64 paintings in a week. Well, if that's in your heart, then set it down on paper. But if you don't make it, it's okay to find yourself overstretched and take a break and step back. And that would maybe you only do 32. Or perhaps what if you only get one done? then it's okay to settle back and still feel good about yourself. Tomorrow's another day. So in the contract that I have a link to, there's spaces where you can put your stretch goal, your medium goal, and your, okay, it's all right goal. And another quote by Julia is, art is not about thinking something up. It's the opposite. It's getting something down. I really like this because we're so used to striving and, doing something as if we have to make it up. We have to pull it out of thin air. We have to be smart and clever and and uh, somehow make these things happen. But if it's the opposite, which is that it's already within us and that we're just making the space for it to become apparent, that's a very different experience. So art is not about thinking something up. It's about the opposite, getting something down. I also like the phrase making room for it. And that's what the six weeks is going to be all about. Again, we have seven classes over the six weeks. Now I am going to just go back to today. This is our introduction. If we were in a class together, we'd have some back and forth, but since we can't, and it's only me talking to you right now, please do leave a comment or share this if you like, and you want to interact that way. Um, so the artist's way. If you don't have a book, many libraries have it. It is available online through libraries. I got um, an audio version through Overdrive. 
So check it out. If you can't get a paper copy, there are other ways to do it. We, the introductory um, sections are about, well, Julia talks about her journey, so you can read that. Her um, theory about spiritual electricity. So the book is very much about recovery, recovering that we're the creative self we were born with. And the idea that it's, it's, um, it works. We don't understand electricity. You don't, when you turn on the light, do you really know what's happening? You don't, but it works. And in the same way, she's saying that if we cover the basic principles, she has 10 basic principles, then the, our creative juices will flow. And if we make the room, if we take time in the morning, usually 20 to 30 minutes to do the morning pages, that's going to help us get through all the excess in our minds. The, oh my goodness. If are, I just saw a video or a move uh, as a show in which they were talking about this horrible thing. If, if aliens would come in and just like read our minds and get every thought, I thought, oh my gosh, those poor things. How would they get through every single thought that we think it's like overwhelming? So the morning pages, if you don't already know, is three pages longhand written in the morning. Now, so that usually to me means very early before you get going with your day. It's morning pages is any time before noon though. So again, make it work for you. So you just want to get a normal notebook. You don't need anything special. I just use, um, actually get it at the Dollar Tree. So three pages longhand. It's just, you're just writing a stream of consciousness. You can choose a topic and write on it. But generally, if you can't think of anything, you're just like, I'm sitting here doing the morning pages. I am just going to work through whatever's in my mind. Oh my gosh, I have to repot that plant. I need to take out the garbage. I can't believe that the garbage fees went up. I'm so frustrated about that. When will I ever feel like my life is moving forward? Um, if you want it, I don't share my, exactly what I do in my morning pages, but I have begun to share my um, online writing. I usually, because of the way I'm a writer, I do my morning pages and then I, I share bits and pieces about it. Now, also, you don't want to feel as if you need to go and review your morning pages every morning. It's really about getting those three pages out and moving on with your day. Your subconscious is gonna be working with all that that you let go. You're gonna feel your shoulders drop a little bit. You got a lot off your mind. So morning pages, then there's the artist state that you're gonna to wanna to think about doing every week. An artist state is pre-planned and you go alone. Very simple, two simple, very rules. And you're feeding your inner child artist self. So something like, to me, I'm thinking of, there's an art store that I always drive by and I've never gone to. And I thought, I'm just going to go and look around at the shelves and see what there is. Maybe I won't even buy anything, but I know I'm going to feel inspired. And maybe I will get something for my little inner child artist self. Um, even as simple as stickers, that's something that doing something that you feel like you maybe wouldn't tell anybody else about. So an artist date once a week pre-planned and go alone. It might take, there's there's um, thoughts in here of doing it like it's going to take two hours, but what if you just went on an artist date that took 15 minutes, stopped at a pond near your house where you always wanted to go and sat quietly and drew a picture of the reeds. 15 minutes of doing that is going to give you that 1% of, of um, expansion and feeling like you have some cool autonomy and um, agency over your life. So the artist date, morning pages, artist date, the walk. Now you can do one walk a week, six walks a week, 20 minutes without any distractions, no, no um, cell phone. You could take your cell phone for safety, but not listening to anything and just noticing and letting your mind be calm and listen listen. <laughs> okay. And then the last thing is tasks. I'm not going to go over all of those during this because there are 10 tasks in each chapter. That's too much probably to undertake. You don't want to make yourself crazy. Julia Cameron says, which is a really good idea is look at them. And the one that you really want to do, go ahead and do that one. 
the one that you really don't want to do, go ahead and do that one. Because if you really don't want to do it, there's probably something there that's really uncomfortable. And it could represent a block to why you're not undertaking your creativity. And it doesn't have to be serious. I actually ended up doing, I do these little things called sudden fictions that just kind of get the juices flowing. And I wrote, ended up, I didn't even consciously mean to do this, but I remember reading, she had something about the monsters that have been felt like they were not supporting you in the past. And I ended up writing this really funny little story about a monster person who was telling me that I wasn't good enough. And then this little banter back and forth between these two characters, it actually made me laugh and really lightened up this whole concept of not being good enough and then how to overcome that. It can feel icky. It can feel like too much. So remember, it doesn't have to be serious. It doesn't have to be um, a hardship. Maybe you draw a picture of what something might look like and an ugly face and then tear it up. But remember, so with the tasks, the 10, and especially because we're doing two chapters um, every week, you're going to want to look at those 20 tasks, choose the ones that draw you forward, and then choose one that that seems to repel you or that you feel like you don't really want to tackle. That might be the one that really has some rewards for you, but you don't want to make yourself crazy either. So... So here we are next week when we meet, it's going to be the assignment of the next two chapters. And over the weeks, there'll be the very same um, setting. We're not going to be doing crazy, outrageous things per the, per the book, but there's a lot in here that's going to possibly be crazy and outrageous for you. But the format will be very much the same. So now before you go, and I know you, you might be busy. You might want to put it off. This might be one of those tasks. You're like, oh, I don't want to do it. But I'm going to pause the video. I want you to take a little time. If you can't do 20 minutes, do two minutes. Just pull out your notebook and write down your goals for the next week. You're going to read the two chapters. How many days do you want to do morning pages? One is better than none. Or do you want to do seven? How many artists... I mean, wh when are you going to go on your artist date? If you can't do two hours, how about 15 minutes? When are you going to sit down and look at the tasks? You write this on your calendar or make a notation of when you're going to do it and choose two of those tasks and then schedule in a walk. If you can't go for 20 minutes, how about five minutes? If you can't go for even five minutes, go outside and get some fresh air. Two deep breaths is better than no deep breaths of fresh air. All right, so take your time, grab your notebook. I'm going to pause the video and then I'm going to come right back and I expect you to be here. Set your timer. You could do, again, one minute is better than none. 20 minutes will give you lots of room for thought and planning. How did it go? Good, I hope. And remember the main thing is what do we want to embody? Our emotions radiate and ripple outward. So a little bit of good feeling about the possibility of creativity is better than um, gripping on and trying too hard to make creativity part of your life. We are creative just by being here. Imagine this, your body, is my spine is upright. My heart is beating. My lungs are filling. I'm already creative. The artist way, taking a walk with the artist way over the next six weeks. It's just bonus material. I'm Kat Fitzpatrick. I'm a writer, teacher, and outdoor educator. And I hope that until we meet again, you do take care. Thanks very much.